Hello, everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Live. My name is Sharon, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine. And tonight, I thought um, we'd do a little something with some friends of mine, some pals, some jungle pals. So let's see. Um, I'm just going to give people a second to, to get on. I know Sheila's already on. And there's somebody else watching. And I was just chatting with Sheila in the chat um, that I've been watching, getting ready to, to uh, go live. I've been cleaning my desk. And while I've been doing that, I've been watching The Dynasty, or I think that's what it's called, um, on Apple TV+. Plus. It's about the, the New England Patriots in the, in the good old days back when uh, Tom Brady first started and we began our, our long running dynasty that has come to an end, at least temporarily. But anyway, that it's fun so far. I'm through almost the second one episode and I think there's only two that dropped today, so I'll have to wait for the rest. But after this, I'll probably clean some more and watch Project One Runway, I don't know. But, um, yes, Sheila, way back, <laughs> back in 2001. But I mean, Let's, I mean, it was a 20 year run, so <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's been a good chunk of time. We, we had more than we deserved, probably. We had a dynasty and then we had a dynasty 2.0. But anyways, tonight I'm going to work with Jungle Pals. So Jungle Pals is a celebration set. So with every $50 purchase um, until the end of this month, this can be one of your choices for a free item. And if you have a larger order, there's also a set of dies that coordinate with them. Now you don't need the dies to make great projects, although if you're gonna if if you've got plenty you wanna buy and you wanna have $150 total in order, you can get the stamp set and the dies um, and make some really fun, fun little cards, fun little jungle themed cards. Doesn't look like much of a jungle out in Maine right now. We got a little bit of snow this morning, but uh, let's let's play with some friends tonight. I'm gonna turn you down. Uh, I'm just gonna get my keyboard out of the way so that it's out of the way. Uh, but let me go ahead and turn my lights down and flip you around. And let's see. All right, there's my there's my cord for my phone so that it. Cause I forgot to charge it, even though I was just sitting here doing nothing. Um, so this is the set and it features five different um, friends. So we've got an alligator and we've got a toucan. I believe this is a lemur and a sloth and a tiger. So I have taken the liberty, hmm. I did take the liberty and cut out a few friends already. Let me go get them because I left them over where I took pictures. So I, I cut out and colored a toucan and a tiger and we've got my alligator. So, you know, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to try to show you some simple versions and then some maybe less than simple versions. But I really, really like the tiger. I love the bold colors. So I know I've already got him cut out, but I'm gonna start from scratch and show you a couple of different techniques. Now, because, um, like if I wanted to keep something really simple and I had just a thick basic white card, I can't just stamp on the card and color it in with blends because the blends go through the, the paper. So you'll always have to cut this guy out. But you could just make that a really cute card by adding a few things. So for instance, I just need to hold that corner down for a minute. Mm. Okay. So I've gone ahead and cut out some, some of the leaves and ferns that come in this die set. And I've cut them out of lemon lime twist and granny apple green and parakeet party. So there's three different greens in here, which is what you'd kind of find in the jungle, right? So you could put some of these 
down. I'm gonna do like an easier version and then I'll do a little bit more stepped up version. So you can put some of these leaves in here, fill some of the gaps. It kind of depends where my little tiger goes, right? So we could put him right there and we could put we could put some leaves in front of him too so he's kind of walking through the jungle. I don't know where this one's going. Maybe this one's going in back of him. So you can just, you know, you can have you can have a fairly clean and simple looking card. All you need to do is kind of glue all that stuff down. If you want to add a little sentiment, a nice little sentiment in, in black might look really nice right here. Um, I guess you could do orange too. I kind of like the pop that the black and the white have together. But obviously this is a little bit of a stepped up version because it does involve dyes. So if you want something just really, really clean and simple, let's see, what could I do? I could, I have a, I have something. I have a scrap already going, but you know what happens when you clean? Well, at least what happens when I clean? I can't find anything. So let me get out a new one. Let me just get out a note card. So if I wanted something to be really clean and simple here, I could just take this guy or if I needed it really clean and simple, I could take a piece of green, so it's just like it's in the in the wild. Let's go ahead and uh, bring in some greeny apple green. So I mentioned, so in the description of this video, it says that we're just playing, so we are just playing. We're just kind of discovering the process of what we're gonna do, because that's half the fun of stamping, is just figuring out what you're gonna do. Well, let's be honest, sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's not fun because sometimes you just don't know what you're gonna do and it's hard to get that mojo going. I get it. We could, we could just have something like this guy on here. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Um, if I wanted to have it just on this little white note card because, you know, it's a pretty, pretty small animal. Um, I could go ahead and cut a layer of this granny apple green. So this card is three and a half by five. So if I made something that was three and a quarter by four and three quarters, that would just be a layer that goes on top here. And I'm flipping this over because I want you to see, and I point this out every now and then, uh, when this is folded, there is an edge that is shorter than the other. And so just flip that over, make sure your longest edge is on the front. That gives it a nicer finished look. So we can have something like this and then just put a little saying right here, like hello or for you or something. But see how that's, and that's keeping it very, very simple. Now what you could also do is if you have another greenery stamp, you could stamp something in the background of that, or you could bring out some of your embossing folders. Hmm. So I have this embossing folder, but I, yeah, that, that kind of works. This is the stripes and splatters um, or the 3D embossing folder. What else I've got in here that would that might work? Hmm, I don't think I have any grassy ones. I wish I kind of did. But when in doubt, I usually will just do something very neutral. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything. So let's go ahead and just try one of these little ones. I don't even think I've opened this one yet. I don't think I've used these at all. Which one should I use? The splatters or the stripes? I think I'm gonna use the splatter, even though at some point you're probably gonna chime in and you're all gonna say, 
No, no, use the stripes. Too late, I'm using this one. Because it's a smaller size, it fits. This is a, a, one of the smaller embossing folders that we carry. All right, gotta get those little pieces out of here. I'm gonna bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And let's see, we need the number four plate. We need our machine. Mm. Let me see if I can move my camera up a little bit, just give you a little bit of extra something so you can see it from a distance a little bit more. It's not that easy to adjust on the fly the way I've got it set up. When you're embossing, you want the number one plate. This is a 3D embossing folder, which means it's extra thick. You always want to put the folded edge through, and then you need the number four plate. That's another free item. What's another free item, Sheila? Oh, the stripes and the splatter? Is that one of the new ones that they added? I wasn't paying attention to that one. Huh. Totally by coincidence. All right, so there I've got, yeah, I've got, that's kind of cool. So I could put this on here and just put my little tiger on here. So then he's kind of cute, isn't he? He's kind of cute. Uh, if you had wanted to stamp a saying, could stamp a saying and put that on there. Uh, what I might be inclined to do, I'm going to do something else with this guy, so I'm not adhering it down. I'm just showing you some options. This is how you can keep it pretty simple. Again, the simplest would be just a flat green with this tiger. Now, I die cut the tiger, but you could fussy cut him. He's, he's actually pretty easy to fussy cut. Um, to step it up, I've embossed. And then I could take my paper and I would just need some sort of sentiments. Um, so maybe it's something great to celebrate. This is from another set. So the one thing about this set, the Jungle Pal set, is there are no sentiments in it. So you have to have another set, a sentiment set, in order to get a sentiment on your card. Um, it could very well have been what was added, Sheila. I can't remember. I can't remember basically from two hours ago. So getting me to remember longer than that is even more questionable. So I can just cut this. Probably be smarter to cut it with my paper trimmer. But you know what? Let's live on the edge. Let's bring my card back in here, see what we'd have going on here. So we've got this little guy here, and then maybe we've just got this little saying right here. And you could be walking on it, or you can just have it down here. Pop him up on dimensionals, and he's just a cute little note card, right? You could have a bunch of these on hand, for just any kind of fun occasion, makes great kid cards. Um, I like the toucan too. I think he's nicely, nice and bright and colorful. And I know I looked up toucans online, and you can color them all sorts of different ways. In case you didn't know, look at look it up. Some of them have blues in their beaks, and greens in their beaks, and some are red and reds and yellows. It is all over the board. The one I looked up actually had a blue eye, so I gave this guy a blue eye. So, all right, let's go ahead though. Um, let me go ahead and stamp and show you how I colored my little uh, my little tiger. So I'm gonna get out my tiger stamp. I always keep my dies in with my stamp sets if the dies 
coordinate. Now that is too, too skinny. So let me get out a bigger, a bigger block. I'm just gonna ink it that way because he's a fairly big, big stamp. Reba, Reba, are you watching? I haven't heard from you in a little while. I'm going to have to text you, see what's what's going on in your world. All right, so there is my little um, tiger. And what I want to do is I want to let him dry for just a little bit because if you don't, you, you might be blending. Uh, when you use your blends, they might be blending more than you want. They might be blending in with the blacks. So we're going we're gonna to just let him sit for a second. I will be bringing in my blends. I'm going to bring in my petal pink. This is the light petal pink. I mean, that's just going to be for his nose. And then I've got pumpkin pies, the light and the dark. I've got my color lifter in case I need it. And then I've got my um, dark granny apple green. Uh, I don't know if I want dark if I want light. I thought this this tiger would look cool with green eyes. So now that it's had time to set for just a second, whoops, that one didn't work out so well. That's probably why that's in that section and not where I want it. All right, we're just gonna go with this one. And because it's a very small area, I'm gonna just use the bullet tip just to color his eyes green. All right, and now I'm going to color him with my um, light and dark pumpkin pie. I tend to want to color with the light first. And because it's a fairly large area, I am going to color with, um, ooh, I didn't mean to go down that far. Darn it. Let's see, let's see if we can get the color lifter to work its magic. Probably won't work it completely. I'm gonna leave that there for a second, let that dry. And all else fails, I'm gonna go back to my other, um, my other sample anyways. Well, I guess I'm gonna color with the bullet tip now. Do you see how I use the same marker over here, but it's so much darker on the bullet tip side. I always find that fascinating. Sometimes it's darker, sometimes it's lighter. There's no rhyme or reason, but it also means I just have to go back over this. I'm gonna leave him having a white nose and a white chest, I think. Now, if you've seen lions and tigers and that kind of thing in the wild or in a, in a zoo, you'll know that white is not necessarily the color that they are. There's not a white in them. It's more of a yellow. It's like polar bears. Polar bears are, very not, are really not white. I don't know if you've ever seen them but they're really kind of more very light yellow. It's like a, an aged white, almost. So I'm just gonna color him in. So the fact that this is a little bit, like the color lifter took a lot of the color away, but it didn't take all of it away. So what I might do what I think I will do is I'm going to color all of this and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take that color lifter and remove that color just so it's the same everywhere there. So this is what happens when, you know, you're, you're blending sometimes if you're not paying attention because I don't know, you're talking to other people. It doesn't mean that there's not a way to fix it. So this is showing a little bit darker right now, but it's pretty wet. It will lighten up a bit. 
I still like it better bright white, but I kind of ruined that, so. I'm gonna keep the belly white, though. Or maybe I shouldn't. Mm, I don't know, that's a, that's a question. All right, so his nose is pretty white. Hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna come in and color with some darker pumpkin pie. And I'm kind of just going around some of the edges where there would be some more shading maybe, because he's, he's round, he's not a 2D image, he's a 3D image. Kind of going just around and like up over the back. And come down a little bit. I'm gonna blend this in. The trick with blends is you have to blend more and not less. So coming in with one color and then adding another color is usually not enough. You have to, you have to color a little bit. You have, to, you have to give it some time because the more saturated the paper is with the ink, the more, um, the more it'll blend nicely. I'm gonna just come up here. So it looks pretty ugly right now, right? But you wait, it's gonna get better. I promise. All right, so now I'm gonna come back in with the light and I'm gonna color over it and blend all those areas. Now, it does work best if you are um, not doing huge sections at once. Like I might have choose, taken a little bit more than I should have to do at once, but you can see now how this is blending nicely. I'm just gonna add in a little bit more down here. Really focusing on those darker spots where I where I added. Just pulling it into other places. And even if at first you don't think you've succeeded, you'll find that it does look better as you go along. Okay, so I don't think I like the white without, you know, because I have this other piece. So I'm gonna have to, as much as I hate to, color these other parts and then try to lift the color too. Okay, that actually looks like I've kind of given my cat a mustache. <laughs> so I'll just come in here just blend it away a little bit just to lighten it so it makes it look like it's all intentional. Okay, so he doesn't look too bad now, does he? Ooh, he's got a little spot on his ear missing. Okay. Well, he looks kind of good. This guy looks better, though. There's definitely more pop of color with this one. But all we need to do to cut him out is we need our stamp and cut emboss machine again. And we need our number one plate. And because we're die cutting, we'll need a number two plate. And we'll need a number three plate. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this down a little bit. While we're here, I might as well go ahead and cut out my little alligator. All right, who can tell me how you can tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? I know it has to do with their snouts, but I can never remember which. It's kind of like what people say when they're trying to tell the difference between twins. Like, I can tell them apart. I just don't know which name goes with which person. Now, I'm a twin, so I know that that people, I know that's real, and I actually experience it with other twins as well. And I try really hard to get the twins' names right because being one, I know that's kind of a thing. 
We were always being called the wrong names when we were little. My mom just called us the twins, so she never got it wrong. Or it was, I mean, like a lot of other parents, Sharon, Sheila, whatever your name is. <laughs> I've done that to my own kids. Aaron, Matthew, whatever your name is. So for those of you who have brothers and sisters, can you relate to that story? Tell me in the comments, were you called by another name growing up? Or did your parents say something like, you know, list all the list all the names and then whatever your name is. <laughs> when they were kind of in a hurry. I imagine that's true for a lot of people. All right. So we've got those die cut. Crocs have long pointed snouts. All right. So this kind of looks more rounded, right? I'm not sure. I bet you could probably add some browns in there, and I bet you could make this look like a croc. We're just going to say it's something dangerous that lives in the wild. And so look at him. I mean, he's really pretty cute, isn't he? But he doesn't look good on the green. I mean, I guess he does look good on the green. And you know, this splatter is a very bumpy texture, just like the gator's skin is. So this would make a really cute card with the splatter on it because it almost, almost, not quite, looks like um, reptile skin. So that would be a good idea. Well, let's go back to this one. I'm gonna bring in, and I am gonna, I'm gonna do this one because I like the really stark, bold nature of the white. I'm gonna bring in a smaller piece of basic white, and I believe this is, it measures three by three by four. And so this is a piece of black that is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And um, we're gonna mat that just because it makes all the colors pop. Look at all these greens that we have. And we're gonna just build this. So I'm gonna build it with some of the greens and figure out how I want it to look. And I'm not gonna worry if it goes off off the side a bit. Because I'm going to trim it down. Let's go ahead and get my glue going. Wider snouts are alligators. Yeah. All right. I guess I have to see them side by side though to, to really get the, like, know which one this one is. I mean, and obviously this is a cartoon version, so. I don't know what it is. Now, what you could do here is you can cut this off, right? So I had, there's only one of these images in the dies. Now there are lots of dies out there that have grassy kind of stuff in them. So it, even if you didn't have these dies, you could certainly make um, a grassy type image. And in fact, I think I have one. Let me see if I've got, um, let me see if some of my, maybe Gorgeous Garden. Let me look, I'm not sure about that one. Meadow Dyes, I think, has some. Let's see what we have in these dye sets. Uh, so this is, oh, so this has like a, a long viney kind of thing. So that would be good. That's from the Meadow Dyes. Let's see what my Gorgeous Garden Dyes have. Let's see if they have some grass. Oh, no, that's, no, that's totally not it. Although, you could make a nice jungle out of this one, I think. But there are other dyes out there, I'm not gonna go through them all tonight, um, that you might be able to substitute, or you could cut your own. It's not extremely hard to cut your own, so, for instance, you know, all you gotta do is, you know, cut some cut some little pieces. And you cut just cut around and so you can make your, your, your own grassy kind of thing. 
and I probably get up that. You can just play with it and figure out what you need to do to make your own grass. All right. So then you could add this other one in here to give a little bit more, um, more stuff going on. Let's see if we added our little, a little tiger there, and we put around. You know what? I think I want to put this. I want to cover up some of these white spots in here. So we got that, and maybe I got this over here. And let's see, I've got some other ones. Oh, maybe I'll put this one over here. Just kind of, just kind of putting a bunch in here, just to add some extra color before behind him, make it look like there's a lot of stuff going on in this little jungle. There we go. And then maybe we put this one in front of him because he's walking through the jungle. Yep, something like that. Let's go ahead and put some of these guys down. Just need a little bit of glue. I already forgot where that one went. And we'll put this one right in here. It's a jungle. You can just keep adding some if you want. And if you wanted to, you could have added a little bit of green with a blending brush at the bottom to take away some of this um, stark white. So let's see. Let's see what I'm going to do here. Maybe I'm going to put this one right here too. Yeah, I'll cover up some of that white there. Okay, and we're going to put this one in. This is definitely kind of a, a scene that I'm building, right? All right, so now I have my little tiger in here. And we're, gonna, we're just going to put him this right over here. I'm not going to pop him up on dimensionals. I'm getting quite a bit of uh, thickness as it is going in here. All right. There we go. And let's try, let's try something like this. He's coming out of the jungle. He doesn't look very ferocious though, does he? He looks like he's coming out to greet us. Maybe just one more different type of green up here. There are two of these little leaves in this particular set. And there are two of these leaves, uh, two of these dies in the set. I'm going to fit this one in there and I'm going to just do a little surgery on him because I've already got some stuff glued down and it won't stick in there. So let's just go ahead and put that there. So there we have that going on. But I don't want all this stuff sticking off the edge. I'm gonna flip it over and take my snips and snip off the excess. I know I just cut off some of his tail. Remember, this is just a scene. It's just a picture, a portion of the scene. Um, before I um, put this on here, I'm going to bring in one of my blending brushes and I think we're going to add some pool party to the top just to give a little bit of a sky effect. I'm just going to very gently add in some blue. I did, I'm doing pool party, but you could do balmy blue too. And probably normally I would do Bobby Blue, but that actually looks pretty good with those greens. So now we'll adhere this on here. Oops. Can you believe it? Less than two weeks left of celebration. So if there's anything that you're still looking for, 
you want to pick it up. Now, this is kind of a black and white card. So like there, here we have something we need, we need a sentiment. I'm going to go in with my zany zoos here and well, maybe I'll just use that one that I had. Mm, no, I don't like that one. Let's do something different. Let's go happy birthday to you. So this would be a great little birthday card for a kid. And we've got the color with the jungle leaves and the tiger. So I'm gonna just put in black and uh, black happy birthday to you. Okay. And so there we could just put that on like that. Maybe cheat it up to the top instead of just centering it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do one more thing. I'm going to bring in some ribbon. And I have just this little bit left on this roll, and I think that's going to be enough. So let's go ahead and see what we get when we tie this guy around here. Let's see how we like it. Oops, I need more. I need more. This is going to be plenty long. I kind of got this idea from Mary Dethridge. Dietrich? I don't know how you pronounce her name. She's a fellow demonstrator. All right. Kind of fix my ends here a little bit. Trim them. Okay, and so there I have, probably if this were a card for a little boy, I might leave the ribbon off. It does kind of add a little bit more femininity. femininity. Ooh, that's hard to say tonight. Um, with the bow. And the bow is, it's fairly flat, so I, I feel like I could get away with some dimensionals here. I'm just gonna finish up this little piece of dimensionals around the edges. I guess I won't finish them up. There's still a little bit left. I use my edges to pop this guy up. I'm gonna put one in the middle too. Looks pretty good. Get the cat hair, not my tiger hair. It's my, it's my orange cat's hair that's on my de desk. Crash. Okay, and so there we have a cute little card. Well, where's my little toucan go? He looked kind of cute on the inside, I think. Let me just add a little bit of color down here with my little toucan. And you can put whatever greeting you want on the inside. Ooh, you know what? We could use that other one, something great to celebrate you. And then we can go ahead and put my little toucan down. Now let me see, do I wanna put my toucan up here by the greeting or down here? I think I wanna put him up here by the greeting. Let's do that like he's saying there's something great to celebrate you and so that is our little jungle friends card so just a reminder for those of you um, who have been thinking about maybe signing up for my spring retreat um, I have not finished with the contract with village by the sea I had to get some clarification um, 
it is on it's going to be held there this is just for the room so for those that were looking at getting a room i'm working on it still um i think um i think i was i misinterpreted something that they said but it is 169 dollars a night to stay there um, plus taxes and fees i think that comes out to 184 a night or for a room and um, you can have up to four people in a room because there are two bedroom units um, and so there's at least three beds uh, in those two bedroom units and one of them's a king so if you don't mind sharing a bed uh, with a friend or a you know a sibling or a daughter then you could do that and save some money um, but it's you know $169 is more than $100 off their normal rate uh, according to what she told me um, and it's uh, obviously you know it's a great rate when you're splitting it because you're not going to find too many other hotel rooms that are that are that cheap around here so anyway um, those those other details will, they'll be coming but this is our little card for tonight and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to turn this back around to me here we go here I am Ooh. I got, I got a little piece of green, green cardstock on my hand. So I hope that those of you who are thinking about signing up for my spring retreat will will do so. I have seven people already um, committed to the retreat, and that's some people that are planning on staying over, and some people that are just planning on doing the day thing. Uh, either way, it's a hundred and. Uh, $49 for the retreat. You get a $50 swag bag uh, that's got Stampin' Up! goodies in it. And you we're going to be playing probably Bunko, but definitely an A game. It might be Bingo, but something like that. Um, and for prizes, and there will be a sweet and salty uh, kind of bar where you can snack throughout the day on sweet and salty things. Breakfast, which would be a continental breakfast, so fruit and pastries. Uh, will be served Saturday morning, and I will be um, serving dinner on Saturday night. And you'll get six make-and-take projects, and there's some add-ons too if you want. But So it's looking, looking like a fun time, I think, for April 20th. And don't delay uh, in signing up too long because I did pre-buy some things, but only enough for 10 participants. Um, if there's more, I can order more, but I just, I want to make sure that I, you know, can kind of get ahead of maybe things that might sell out like that beautiful um, perennial lavender designer series paper. So don't delay if you want to sign up for that. Um, what am I doing this weekend? I'm getting ready for my trusty tool stamp camp that's next Saturday. I've just got one project left to design and cut for, and uh, everything else is already made. It's so, I think... A lot of the projects are really cute. I'm going to show you a real quick one. I'll probably show you this at some other point, how to how to do this at a, at a little thing. But here's a little pouch, and that's going to be one of our projects. And this is a this is a no adhesive pouch that I'll show you how to make sometime. So anyway, um, I hope you guys all have a great weekend. There's no more snow in the forecast until maybe next late next week. So. Sad for me, happy for most of you. I hope you have a great weekend and uh, go ahead and stamp something. See you later.